I am Dr. Amarjit Kaur. I am Professor of Accounting and Dean at Faculty of Commerce and Management, Gurugram University, Gurugram. This is my pleasure to interact with you today on the topic Purchase Book. So, Purchase Book, as we all know, is a special book, is a subsidiary book, right? As the name suggests, special book, as I said, it is special book. So, it means it serves a special purpose. So, the question comes in, what is that special purpose? The special purpose this book you know, caters to is to record only those transactions which pertains to purchases of goods or services on credit. So, please uh, note down, I am emphasizing upon that we record purchases of goods and services on credit and that particular transaction is going to be recorded in this book, purchase book, right? So, this purchase book does not work as an account. It means in case we have purchase book being kept in our books of account, we are supposed to be opening up an, an account under the title of purchase account in our ledger book. So, why I am discussing this? Because cash book, which is one of the important subsidiary book, if somebody is keeping cash book in the books of accounts, then uh, the business need not to open up cash account. Whereas, if a business is uh, keeping a purchase book, which is also a special book or subsidiary book, the business need to open up an account separately in the ledger book under the title purchase account. So, uh, as we know that purchases do not happen uh, so, you know, on, on cash only, they do happen on credit. But important point is that we have to record only those purchases of goods and services which uh, are purchased with the purpose of reselling or consumption in the, man in the production. If I am buying, if I am a business and if I am buying a non-current asset or a long-term asset, so shall I be recording this in the purchase book? You have to think about it. So, uh, so if you remember, I started my conversation by saying that purchase book is a special purpose book and it, it is used to record purchase of goods and services on credit. So, I am really putting up a lot of emphasis on the word on credit. It means if I have purchased something on cash, I am not going to record that transaction in this book. Also, if I have purchased long term assets, non current assets for uh, use in my business and not meant for sale or resale, I am not going to record that in the purchase book. Right? Let us take few example. Let us say I am a mobile shop. So, I am in, uh, a proprietor having a shop where I buy mobile handsets and sell them. And uh, I do have furniture, you know, I have a display desk, I have table, I have couple of more things like chair, air conditioner, maybe laptop as well. So, uh, if I am buying uh, 100 mobile sets from XYZ company, my intention is to resell them, to sell them off to retailers, to buyers, right? So, that becomes my goods, that becomes goods purchased for the purpose of reselling, right? But the same company which is into mobile uh, uh, you know, sales, if they buy two chairs, they want to replace their chairs in the office itself, in the in the shop itself. So, they purchase two chairs, right? So, those uh, chairs were purchased on credit. The question is, shall the company be recording that purchase on credit of two chairs in the purchase book? The answer is no, right? So, I hope you could get uh, you know, what I want to communicate with the help of this example that only purchases of goods and services which are on credit irrespective of the credit terms. The next question may come into your mind, is it important that what are the credit terms? No, it is not important, 
the only thing is we should purchase it on credit my credit terms could be 45 days uh, with no interest could be 45 days with interest uh, it could be 60 days without interest or 60 days with interest or any any number of days any terms and conditions right that doesn't matter at all my credit terms are not important important is i am buying goods and services for reselling right only and only in that condition i am going to record the transaction in purchase book so i i hope you have a clarity that what is going to be recorded in the purchase book now once we open a purchase book then we are going to close it at the end of the accounting period and the balance is going to be transferred to the purchase account in ledger book as i said purchase book doesn't work as a ledger doesn't work as an account unlike uh, the uh, the cash account or the cash book cash book solves both purpose it works as an account and as a book as a journal whereas the purchase book works only as a journal not as an account so it it becomes mandatory for us as an accountant as a finance officer to per, to open up an account under the title purchase account in our ledger book right this is the second important aspect pertaining to purchase book now i am going to share the format of purchase book once we are clear that what is purchase book and uh, what and and one under what condition we use that the next point is what is the format of purchase book this is the format in front of you the, per, the format of purchase book as you notice there are five columns in the purchase book the first column is date column here we record the date of purchase of our goods or services right so as we uh, i hope we all understand that any journal book the recording is always on chronological order which means uh, uh, date wise so if i have purchased something on 1st january it is going to be recorded first followed by the next purchase which could be either on 5th or could be on 8th or could be on 10th right so we always record uh, in the journal book all the transaction on chronological order so this is the first column the second column in the particulars or explanation or you may like to write any word particulars explanation or details any of these three words could be used and very common in this uh, column we are going to put up the detail by name of the uh, uh, you know supplier who has supplied us goods or services on credit so if i purchase material from abc limited i will write abc limited and followed by the description of my purchase i may have purchased 100 mobile handsets at the rate of 10000 each right i may have received some trade discount so i am going to record that as well in the detail column or the particular column so basically i am acknowledging the company or the business it could be a proprietor or partnership firm or a company who have supplied us goods or services on credit all right so in the ex, uh, in the second column i i could uh, i think i could explain you what is going to be the content in it the third column is invoice number now whenever we purchase the company which sells us they issue us invoice in general language in common language we call it as bill right we say bill uh, bill is to be issued bill is bill has been received bill has not been received these are the common statements being made in any business all right so the invoice number every purchase has a specific invoice number so in this column we incorporate or we write down the invoice number of a particular transaction of a particular date because we may have purchased 10 times during one accounting period from the same person from the same company but if the, those transactions have happened on different dates we are supposed to be recording it 
on different dates. We cannot put the same person's name again and again against the same date if transaction has happened on a different date, right? So, I am, it means I may have to open up multiple entries in the purchase book with the same supplier's name, but the important is date is different. So, I need to record it separately independently. Coming to the fourth column, the ledger folio. So, ledger folio column is uh, always used in the journal book. Uh, for the purpose of reference, it is used when the account is open. When we open up and purchase account in the ledger book, we are supposed to have a cross reference of journal folio. Folio means the page number, the folio number. So, every book has a folio number on the top of it written. So, this is an old system. Nowadays, in a computerized accounting, we need not to have this because we can simply have the sheets, the worksheets or the software, uh, you know, ERP or there are a couple of softwares, accounting software especially. So, we, we may not have that LF, but we may have a reference point or reference column or reference page number or remark column, right? But uh, this is a manual record when we have a ledger folio number. So, this ledger folio number remains uh, blank till the time we are completing purchase book. We are writing our purchase book. This column will be filled when we transfer the balance of the purchase book to the purchase account. So, in the ledger folio, we will write the number of the ledger where we are doing the posting. Right? At this stage, we are doing the recording part. So, the ledger folio column will be written late at the later stage when we are doing the posting part. The last column is about the amount. Here, whatever is the amount net of the discount that is written. This is very, very important. I have seen students committing this mistake. Right? They may write the gross value of the transaction and then they deduct the amount, uh, discount amount from this in this column and then they write the amount. Sorry, this is not a correct practice. What we are supposed to be doing is, we are supposed to be describing the transaction in the particulars column or details column and then we need to subtract the discount in the same column and thereafter write the uh, uh, correct and the you know, net amount in the amount column. So, I hope the complete format has been explained to you and you could gather that. Moving forward, I am going to take a small caselet on purchase book. I have tried to incorporate different scenarios of uh, per, you know, transactions either of goods or long term uh, assets uh, with cash and on credit both. So that you could have a clarity which of the transaction we need to record or which of the transaction qualify to be recorded in the purchase book. Because I hope you remember initially I made a point that all the transactions do not qualify to be recorded in the purchase book. Okay? So, this caselet uh, is, uh, uh, is like this. So, if you refer to the slide now, it says enter the following transactions in the purchase book of Messrs. Nitin and Brothers for January 2021. Okay. On January 1st, the transaction is that Nitin and company has purchased from Messrs. Shilpi 100 boxes of washing powder at the rate of 200 each and 50 boxes of detergent cakes at the rate of 100 each and they received a discount of 10%. Now, please make a, make a note of this point which I am going to make now that it is very, very important for us to understand the nature of the business of the company for which we are uh, preparing the purchase book. Why? Of course, that question may come to your mind. The answer is we need to prepare, uh, we need to prepare the purchase book in the books of account of any business. but Unless we know the nature of the business of that company, we cannot decide the purchase, a particular purchase transaction is 
uh, you know, involving goods or non-current asset. For example, in this case, in this small case let, if Nitin and uh, brothers, the company is into real estate because name, this name doesn't suggest what kind of business they are. They can, they can be simply brokers, they can be real estate agents, they can be developers. Right, so message Nitin and Brothers company in the title does not uh, say the nature of the business. But the moment we read the transaction on January 1, it clearly tells us that they are into kind of grocery shop or maybe specifically detergent shops, something like that. Right, so it, it's more likely they are into gross, grocery shop and we can assume that this particular a good or service which is there in the example is meant for resale. But if uh, it is Nitin and brother company, it w they were into, uh, uh, into real estate and the first transaction was pertaining to purchase of uh, houses, purchase of apartments, purchase of uh, any um, flat. In that case, you may think it is a non-current asset, right? In that case, you would have to read the second transaction, third transaction and then you may, you could have figured out that this company is into the real estate business and purchasing and selling is of real, uh, real estate, purchasing and selling of uh, flats, apartments is there, for them it is inventory, for them it is good only, right? So you will take it as a transaction which is liable, which is qualifying to be recorded in the purchase book, right? So the second important tip from my side for preparing a purchase book is to have a clarity by reading the given case, by reading the given question about the nature of the business, okay? So once I have clarified this point, let's move further and let's see that uh, this Shilpi and company has purchased washing powders at the rate of 200 each and 50 boxes of detergent cakes at the rate of 100 each and received a discount of 10%. Second transaction, uh, I will just read few transactions and, and then I will discuss the solution. The second transaction says, which is on January 5th, purchased from Messrs. SL Brothers 50 boxes of peanut butter at the rate of 300 each and 50 boxes of pancakes at the rate of 50 each and received a discount of 5%, right? The next and the third transaction is on January 10th, purchased from Messrs. Chan Sons 120 boxes of coffee at the rate of 200 each and 50 boxes of tea bags at the rate of 150 each and received a cash discount of 5%. This is the third transaction which has happened on January 10th. On January 15th, the next transaction is purchased on cash. Mind you, this says purchased on cash from Messrs. Raj Brothers 110 boxes of pencils at the rate of 10 each and 50 boxes of Favi sticks at the rate of 5 each and received a discount of 8%. And the next transaction is on January 25th. It says purchased on credit from Messrs. SK Brothers two tables at a rate of 12,000 each and one and two chairs at the rate of 1,500 each and received a discount of 10%. Now in this case they are buying furniture, mind you, and the company we discussed is in the in uh, is a grocery shop, right? So it means this is a non-current asset though being purchased on credit. So we need to understand the implication of this particular nature of transaction. The last transaction says purchase from Messrs. Giriraj 10 boxes of cheese slices at the rate of 100 each and 50 boxes, boxes of cheese cubes at the rate of 120 each and received a discount of 10%. Right? So these were the transactions we have. Now let's discuss the solution. So I am going back to the first transaction which was on January 1st, okay. In this case 100 boxes of washing powder of uh, uh, powder were uh, purchased at the rate of 200. It means my 
my purchases of washing powder were 20,000. 200 into 100 plus the 50 boxes of detergent cakes. In, uh, so, 50 boxes at the rate of 100. It means my amount in total becomes 20,000 plus 25,000. And if I deduct 10% uh, discount, so 2500 would be my discount, right? So, the my net purchases would be 22,500, okay? So, I hope you remember the format and here is the for, uh, solution uh, with the format in front of you. So, this format is very much as we discussed. So, date column, particular column, ledger folio, invoice and amount. So, we have written in against date January 1st, in the detail column, we have written Mrs. Shilpi. So, whomsoever we buy from, we write the name of the company, okay. So, we are writing Mrs. Shilpi here and in the description, we have described the purchases. So, I, as I have already discussed, I will not be discussing all the details. So, the total amount 25,000 purchases is in the particulars column, not in the amount column. Just look at the slide, right? In the amount column, we have net amount, net of discount. After subtracting 2500 of discount, we have uh, the net amount of 22,500. Now, coming back to the second transaction. Second transaction was on January 5th, as I already read in, uh, to you that we purchased from SL Brothers 50 boxes of peanut butter, okay. So, 50 boxes were purchased at the rate of 300 each. So, the amount becomes 15,000, alright. And we also purchased one more item from Mrs. Uh, SL Brothers and that was 50 boxes of pancake. So, 50 and the price was 50 each. So, we purchased peanut butter of 15,000 in total and we purchased pancake of 1,500 in total. So, it means my total purchases are uh, 15,000 plus 2,500. So, 17,500 and then we have received discount of 5 percent. So, this is how I will write. So, uh, sorry 15,000 and, and 2,500. 50 boxes of pancake at the rate of 50 each. So, it becomes 17,500, right? So, the total amount is uh, there uh, in the amount column net of the discount, which you can see, right? So, so please note down that do not write the gross amount in the amount column. We need to write the net amount, net of discount. Now, I will be discussing the third transaction which I already uh, you know, shown to you, which happened on 10th of January. On 10th of January, we purchased from Messrs. Chand and Sons 120 boxes of coffee. So, if we have purchased 120 boxes at the rate of 200, it means 24,000. And we also purchased tea bags of 150 uh, units at the rate of uh, we have give, we, you know, we have 50 boxes at the rate of 150, it means 7500. So, 2400 and 7500, we will subtract the discount and it would be very much like the previous two transaction. It would be recorded here in the books of account on against January 10th, right? So, next transaction I want to discuss is very, very important. So, on January 15th, as I showed you, the transaction that this time we purchased from Mrs. Raj and Brothers 110 boxes of pencils at the rate of 10 each. It means I purchased uh, pencils for 5500, okay, 110 into 50. And I also purchased Fevi sticks 50 boxes uh, in uh, uh, at the rate of 5. So, 50 boxes into 5 means 250 and 110 boxes of pencils at the rate of 10, which means uh, 1100, 1100 plus 250. That is my purchase from the Messrs. Raj brothers. So, I have a question to you. Just think, shall we be recording this transaction? Just think for a while. In the purchase book, no, we should not. 
If you have paid attention to my previous discussion, I clearly said only those transactions of goods and services which are on credit should be recorded. So, this transaction does not qualify to be recorded in the purchase book. So, we are not going to record this in the purchase book though it is good and service for the business because this is a grocery shop, a small shop selling all kind of basic things and including the stationery. So, uh, good is there. It is meant for resales. This qualifies one condition only. This does not qualify both the condition that it should be on credit and it should be good or services on uh, credit for resale purpose. Right? So, this transaction will not be part of uh, your purchase book. And the same is true for the January 25th transaction. We purchased on credit, but this time the, the company has purchased furniture, two tables as well as two chairs. Uh, you may think uh, why not this purchase is on credit and purchase book is meant from credit uh, for credit purchases. Uh, my dear students, my dear viewers, uh, purchases are on credit, I do agree, but we did not purchase good or service in this example, we did purchase only the furniture. So, this transaction will also not be recorded in the purchase book. Coming to the last transaction which we made from Messrs. Giriraj, 10 boxes of cheese at the rate of 100 which means 1000 rupees of uh, cheese slices and 50 boxes of cheese cubes which means uh, in at the rate of 120 each which, which means uh, 6000. Uh, 6, so, this total amount is going to be recorded in the purchase book after subtracting the discount. So, if you look at the transaction of January 30th, we have recorded Messrs. Giriraj, the total amount in the call, uh, in the particulars is 6000. So, purchases of both the items which we purchased from this Messrs. and in the amount column we have 5400, right. So, I hope you could understand with the help of this case that which all transactions qualify to be recorded in the purchase book which all transactions are going to be ignored or not recorded in the purchase book and also you could understand the logic behind. I will just repeat the logic is only those transactions which are on credit but pertaining to goods and services meant for resale. So, they quali qualify to be recorded in purchase book. So, with this I would like to close uh, the lecture now. Thank you very much for being with me for these 30 minutes. Thank you viewers.